Hello everyone. Welcome to the 21st webinar in 12D's training webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at 12D Solutions. 12D's training webinars showcase common industry challenges, taking a close look at industry best practices and how these can be implemented using 12D model software. The aim of these webinars is to upskill 12D model users and broaden their understanding of the capabilities of 12D model. We run these webinars regularly and record them for posting through our website and on YouTube. The first 20 webinars from this training series, as well as the first 21 webinars from our Industry Solutions series, are available on our YouTube channels if you missed those. During this live presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way. We'll pop that up on the screen in a moment, and we'll answer as many as possible throughout the webinar. At the end, I'll also read out some of your questions to the presenter for his insights if there's time. Today's webinar, Material Creation and Quantity Calculations, will be presented by Paul Hardwick, who's been in the civil construction industry for 16 years. He's worked as a construction surveyor on small and large-scale projects and had many years of experience contracting to local authorities carrying out detailed surveys for pre-design works. Paul has been with 12D Solutions for nearly five years in a training and support role. In this webinar, Paul will discuss colouring triangles, renaming strings, creating tin colour styles, creating curb and undercurb material styles, creating traffic island curbs, undercurb material and island infill styles, creating polygon styles, and using the Material Create Report option in 12D Model 12 to produce and calculate the volumes of trimeshes. Over to you, Paul. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, this is a new option inside uh, version 12. Um, I'm using a development version, C1G. So in the release version of C1G, you should have these options um, for you to use. At the moment, it'll be stored under User, Beta, Pavement. So I'll just pin this option out and we'll be using the few things here, uh, Material Management Attributes and Material Create Report Volumes. So these are the main two we're going to focus on today. So to start us off, we're going to read in 12D AFS and data. So File, Data Input, 12D, 12D Archive Data. And we select this one here. Material volumes on data, read, and there's our data. So if we have a quick look, we've just got a design tin, some design strings, an existing surface, um, some control lines, things of that nature. So the aim of this is to calculate the volumes for a design so that we can estimate how much we're going to need to quote to win this job. So that's a bit of the background. Now this isn't designed to give you perfect answers, it's designed to give you a quick, easy way of calculating the volumes and creating tri-mesh. So in Plan View 1, I'm just going to add on some design data. So I can search for my design by typing in the search bar here, design and only models that have design in the name will show up. So I'm going to select everything except for these roundabout design strings. So that's my design data. Just going to send the tin to the back. Send view, send tins, rasters to back. So now I can see my design strings. So part of the option that we're going to be using today, we'll look at triangle colours and apply pavement thicknesses based on the triangle colour. So to colour the triangles in my design here, I want to create some polygons that I can use to colour the triangles. So to do this, I'm going to get all of the lip of curb strings and copy them to a model that I can then use to create polygons. So to do this, I go under Utilities, a to G, change. Now I can use my filter here to then filter the strings. So first of all, I'm going to filter by view, then by string info. 
So I'm going to type in here KL star. So that means I want to search for all the strings to start with the letters KL. Okay, so I hit filter select and it says 17 elements selected from 12 models. All right, so I'm going to give them a new name called Polly and new color, make them red and I'll make them a little bit thicker, um, set the weight to two. And I'll copy them to a model called Road Polys. Okay, so I'll just hit change. So that should have now copied those onto a model called Road Polys. So I'll turn those on. Okay, so to join all these strings together, if I have a look here, you can see that they're all segmented where the different curves start and end. So what I want to do is to create a polygon of this whole area. So to do this, we go under Utilities, H to Z, Head to Tail. So I'll pick this model. And I'm just going to set a tolerance here. Now the tolerance is a distance from the between the two points of the two separate strings. So I'm going to say anything that's within a millimetre of each other, join them together. Okay, and I can come down the bottom and hit replace existing data. So I just hit process. So now if I do a string inquire, that's all one big string around that side and another string on that one. So now to join those together, I can set my tolerance to say 10 metres and then that'll allow it to join across here because that's less than 10 metres across the road. Okay, so now I can close that string. So I'm going to use this close here or under CAD string close. Let's just pick and accept. And that's now closed that polygon. Now if I turn on my uh, I've got the roundabout design strings. There is a polygon here already that defines the area of the, the roundabout pavement. Okay, so I'll move that to this model, the same model, and give it a new colour. So to do that, I'm going to go under strings, strings edit, change. I'll change his name to Polly and new model, I'll put it onto the same model as this one, road polys. New colour, I'll make it blue. Okay, so I just hit, and I'll give it a new weight there too as well. So just hit start, and then pick and accept that string. And now you've got the blue string that runs around there as well. Okay, so now I've got my polygons that make up the road. So what I'm going to do is now turn on my tin so you can see me colour the triangles. So views, send tins, rasters to back. So the option we're going to use is tins, colour, colour within polygon. So I can pick my design and I'll tick this box here, use polygon colour and tick null on accept of polygon. So as soon as I pick and accept the string, it'll colour the triangles. So I just pick and accept. So that's coloured them all red. Now if I pick my next one, i make sure I get the blue one. Now that's coloured those triangles blue. So now I can set up in my pavement styles a style for a colour of a blue and another one for red. So we'll go have a look at that. So once again it's under the beta menu, uh, user beta pavement and we're using this one here, material management attributes. So the first time that you run this we've set some defaults so that you're not coming in here blind and so we've got some set up here for polygons, curbs, islands and tins. 
So I'll be showing you a few of each one of those and what each one does. So if we have a look first at tins, I've got one here for uh, paving and road bitumen. So I'll add in a new one. Or I might even just edit this one here and I'll change this its colour. So this is the triangle colour that it's looking for. Okay, so I'm going to start with the red. I'll type in red. The description here is just a description for you to be able to understand what you're doing. So you could just put in there type A, which just means, you know, type A type pavement. Okay, so on the type um, A pavement, on this road here, we've just got a 30 mil layer of asphalt. So it's dense grade asphalt, 10 mil. And I'm just going to say here, so this is just a bit of a descriptive name. I'm just going to put in there DG10 30 millimeters. You can put whatever you want, but later on when we do a report, that's what's going to come out in the report as the material name. Okay, so you might have some descriptions in there, and I'll just put in my depth. So if you read the little tooltip down the bottom here, depth in meters of material and a negative value is down. So I'm going to go from the top surface down 30 millimeters, and I'm going to uh, use this color here. This road bitumen. Um, then I'm going to put it onto a model called design mesh pavement. Okay, so underneath that, I've got um, some material here. I'm just going to copy this one up here. So the name is going to be 2.1 gravel, and I'm going to make it 170. Actually, I won't even. I'll just put it all under 2.1 gravel. And I'll clear out the description in here. And in here, this area, I'm going to make it 170 mil thick. Okay, once again, it's going to go into a model called Design Mesh Pavement, and the colour is going to be this. So the next one, I'm going to make this 2.4 gravel. The next layer. Okay, and I'll just clear out the description there. And I'll leave it at 200 millimetres. And goes onto it a model called Design Mesh Pavement. Now this is just another one here for subgrade. If you had another layer, you can just keep going down to your run out of patience, putting more in. So I'm just going to delete that one there. I don't need this one anymore. So that's my red pavement. So all of this area will have these layers here. I'll just create one for blue. So blue. And layer, first layer, it'll be DG10 again. And this time I'll make it 50 millimetres. And in here, I'll just put in here minus 50. And the colour, I'll make it a different colour this time. Uh, I'll make it this road shoulder colour. And I'll grab this model name and make that my model name here as well. Okay, add another layer, so 2.1 gravel, and this time it'll be 150 mils thick, and I'll make it granular, uh, granular one, and put it onto that model there, create another layer, 2.4 gravel, and we'll make this one 200 millimetres, uh, pick another colour, this granular 2, and put it onto that model. Okay, so there's our, our colours in here for our pavement. So we can just hit set there, and so that is now set the attributes that we're going to be using for these, this pavement. So now to use them, we'll turn on, um, we'll make sure in the view one here, we've got turned on our tin and our strings that we want to use as well. Okay. So I'll just finish that off and I'll open up the next panel here. So material create report volumes. So I'm going to use everything in view one as my data source. And I can ignore all these settings down here for the moment and I just want to create the tri-mesh. So I just hit process, and then it will go through and create all of those tri-mesh. So 
So it's created a lot of lot of data there, 151 trimesh. So if I go turn them on. So then it's gone and created all of that, all of those trimesh for you. Now if we have a look at this one here, you can see my curve has ended up in the, the inside of the road. So I can either just rename it to a different name so it goes out to the right hand side or I can um, just reverse the string. Okay, and if I have a look at the start here, the curb, the material under the curb actually comes inside and I actually want it to step out. So I'll show you where we can change that. So first of all, we'll go reverse those strings. So if we come into here, so it's the KLR string. So to reverse a string, it's CAD, Oh, sorry, CAD string reverse and I'll just pick here at my lip and just make sure I get the KLR. So another good idea is you can put a line style on here so you can see which way the pavement marks go. So you can put like an edge of bitumen line style so you can see which way's in and which way's out. Probably should have done that for you. So KLR, reverse that string. And before I run this option again, I'll just go into my attributes and my KLR under curb. So because this string goes to the right, I should have had a, a positive offset for my offset behind back of curb. I'll explain this in more detail in a minute. We're going to make a new one for a traffic island. So I'll just update that and then reprocess the, the data. Okay, so depending on how big your data set, this could take a little bit of time, but it's doing a lot of work for you. So I'll just have a look now. So it's fixed the behind the back of curb, and then also it's fixed this curb here as well. So it automatically cleans and updates all the tri-mesh that, you, that you're creating as well. Okay, so now all I need to do is my road, my island in here, so I can calculate the island and then, then the infill. So I'll show you how to create an infill. Okay, so let's come up here and shut down the curves. And I've got one here called islands and I've already got one called KLM. So that's for a mountable curb. So I'm just going to do another one. So I'll just go add. And the name of my string, if I turn it on, into my is alignment design uh, alignment islands so the name of my string is this one here klsm that's my string name okay so i just go klsm and then i just come down to my curb shape so at this point i'm just going to show you another little thing that we've brought, had in version 11 as well but i'm going to read in um, a 2d pdf of my standard drawing. So I've just got this one here, uh, standard drawing 1033, which is one of the TMR drawings. So I just select that and read it in. So if I turn that on, so the one that I'm going to be working on is this curb type here, this type 10. So for my curb shape, I'll give it that name. I'll just call it type 10. And in the description, you might put in there something like SD1033, which is just the description of the standard drawing that it come off. Now, the depth here is usually if we're doing a curb and channel like this one, the type 7, the depth would be from the lip up here down to the base of the curb. Now, for what we're doing, we're doing an island curb. There is no depth. So it just sits flat down there. So I'll just set that back to zero. And I'll put it on the same. Actually, I'll let it keep going to that, this model here, this tri-mesh, the TM model. Uh, this is the color it's going to be. Okay. And so this is my first link. So I'm going to create this link here where the A is. And I'm going to call it KF for curb face. And the width will be zero. And I'm just going to go up from my reference point, which is this point here. 
and I'm going to go up 25 millimeters. Okay, don't worry about the color. I'm just going to use the color of the overall tri mesh. Okay, now I can do another link, which will be my curved top, which is this one up here, and the width there will be 0.19. Now this is to the right hand side of the string and my height will be 100. So it's 100 millimeters between where I put this link and then this one. So I just go 0.1 and add another link, curve back. The width will be 0.3 and the height will be zero. Okay, so now I've got my, my curve shape done. So now I can look at my island infill. So I just add a layer. So my name here will be grass. And we'll make it uh, 50 mil thick grass. And we'll make it a nice pretty color, make it fizz grass. And we'll let it go to this tri-mesh model. So now underneath my curb, I'm going to create a layer under here. So here I'll make my um, DG DG10, so same sort of material, and it'll be 50 millimeters. Okay, and the depth here, 0 0.5, and here I think I used road shoulder, hopefully, and I'll let that model go there. Okay, then if I want to do another layer, um, 2.1 gravel, and the depth there is going to be, we'll leave it at 150 mil. We can see what that looks like. Now the offset here, I can set that back to zero. Now if I want stepped pavement, I could just keep an offset in there and it would step it out from the previous layer. Because at the moment, the top layer is going to be 200 mil behind back a curb. And then the next layer will be zero offset from that. So I'll just pick this granular here for my color. Um, okay, then you can keep adding layers and you'll see, see that as you have a bit of a play yourself. So I'll just hit set there. Um, the other one too is I've got my KLM island here and I don't have any curb um, underneath that because if I have a look here, see how the pavement already runs underneath the island? So I don't need to put any more pavement under there. So for my KLM curb uh, islands, I'll just delete this under curb um, option there. So then I'll have nothing underneath the curbs. They just stick, stick to the asphalt there. All right, so I just hit set, finish, and then I can process and update the materials. So that'll work through those. Okay, so now if we have a look at it and I turn on the model TM. And also got another model called infill, I think. So you can see how much work that's done for you. It's created all those traffic islands, uh, the infills, behind the back of curbs. Um, you know, that's, that's a lot of work, okay? So, and if we have a look in this in, in cross-section, so on here I'll just turn on the models called sections. How good's that search? Just so fast, didn't we able to pick that? So I'll just pick one of those cross-sections. And I'm going to transfer all the models that are on in my 3D view into my cross section. So any models that are on in here, I'm going to go models transfer, pick and accept this view, and then turn them on in this view. So that'll add all of those models on, onto there. So you can see what it's done. It's created the materials there. And if I do my string inquire, now if you use the default one, you won't get that much information. So when you pick, you just get the normal default information. But if you use the 12D Inquire, this one, um, you get extra tri-mesh information down the bottom. So it'll have the layer name and it will have a description and things like that in there um, as well and gives you the depth. 
so you can work out where you were. Okay, so that's all of it, created all the tri-mesh there. And then now to calculate the volumes of, of what we've got, I can now just come over here and tick on the box here, calculate volumes. And I'll untick report individual uh, materials. So I just want the totals of how much each of each material I have. And to calculate the bulk earthworks, I can pick original tin here, which is my ground. And then I can pick my design tin. Okay, so this is going to create a super tin of all of the subgrade tins and the design tin all, all made together. Um, now, if I don't want that to, to stay around afterwards, I can just hit the tick box here and it will delete all the, all the tins that get created. But if you want to be able to use them for other things, so um, you might want to use uh, a, a longer string or you might want to um, you know, break it up into different areas, so the super, you can use that super tin later on for that. So I'll, I'll keep it there. And in the report, I'll um, just give it a name. Really original, so I'll just go process, and it does go through the whole process again, and um, and you know updates everything. It kind of has to so that it can calculate all of the volumes for you. All right, so there it goes, and volumes calculated, and if I hit open, there's my report. So it's got your total materials total. So of my DG ten. 30 mils, so you can see why I use those names because it just makes it a little bit easier for, for me to read it when it comes time here. So um, DG10, so I've got uh, 165 cubic metres of that and this is the 2D area of it and same here with um, all the other ones down here. And then it also counts your curb lengths as well. So I've got um, curb length totals, so I've got 11, 11 KLLs, um, 6 KLRs, 6 KLMs and 1 KLSM and gives you the 2D length and the 3D length and then also gives you your total cut fill here as well. Okay, so I'll just shut that down. Now if you wanted to use a range file, you can use those and it produces faces there as well. So it's um, got the full capability there of being able to do that on the fly as well. So that's um, a nice easy subdivision um, where you've only got really one pavement change and things like that. So I do have another project here to show you and I'll jump into that one um, to show you how you can, another way you can make polygons and then, and then colour tins and things like that as well. So we've got another project here, and I'll try and put these up on, onto our website so that you can um, download them and have a bit of a look and, and, ha and have a bit of a play yourself. So this one here, I've got my design strings, and I'm just going to delete this model here I was playing with while I was waiting. So models, delete, delete a model. I'm just going to delete this section model. Okay, so one of the great features um, that uh, Peter Tatum showed the other day, um, recreating a design from strings. Um, so I don't want to get too far into that, but this is just a great little option for, be able to, for being able to create cross sections at every single critical point along the string. So I'm going to use the cross sections to create polygons. So under design, um, apply, apply MTF recreate is the option I'm going to use. Okay, so we're not going to go into the MTF, but we're just going to use this to create the cross sections that I'm going to need to create my polygons. So model of strings to start with, I've got um, on this view here, I've got my alignments and my strings on the left hand, on the top side here which is RS01 design, and on the bottom side here I've got design RS02. Okay, so the reference string is just your centre line, and your 
uh, model of strings is this um, strings model out here. So I can just go process there. Okay, so then that will create my um, cross sections that I can use. So the ones I want to use here is the RS01 sections. And while I'm here, I may as well do RS02. And pick RS02 sections. So process. Okay, so that's created my cross sections. And if I turn on the next one, so RSO2 construction sections. So you can see they're, they're really close together because the design strings had them, had vertices really close together. And then out here there's not, not a need for them, so they've spread them out. So the macro is, is really good because it, it reproduces the exact way that the cross sections would have been from the designer. Okay, so now I can use these cross sections to build polygons because on this road I might have different pavements up to chain inch 300 and then another one up to 400. So you'll, you'll see as we go along here. So to colour the sections, uh, to, to create the polygons, that's under design, cross sections, polygons from multi, uh, polygons from sections, multi. And this is a, an updated version of, of an older one there that just allowed you to do single single picking and one at a time, where this is a function and recalculable so you can um, change it and update and, and make, it, make your life so much easier. So I'm just going to call this um, RS01 is my function name, um, polys, and my section model will be my RS01 construction sections. And my polygon is going to be called road polys. So that's the model that I'm going to produce. And I'm going to tick this one here so you can see them, is use solid fill. So it'll solid fill the polygons. So the inner name and outer name are the strings that we want to search for in the cross sections. Okay, so inner name, I'm going to start with this one here. I'm looking for the string MCE01. And my outer name will be this string over here, my curb lip. So I want it to create a polygon from this side of the road all the way across to here. Okay, so the colour, I'm going to start off with a red and I'll call it poly. And my start chainage, I'll put in zero. And my end chainage, I'll put in, say, 300. Okay, so I just hit... Uh, process and I'll turn on that model. So it's just created that polygon from there. So if I want to make another one a little bit further on, I'll just copy him down and this time I'll say he starts at 300 and goes to 400 and I want him to be blue. So you can see how this is going. It's nice and easy. Oops, sorry, 300. He's probably yelling at me process, but nice and easy to change. If I make a mistake, I can just come back up in here and change, change the chainage. Um, and then I'll copy this down again, and I'll go from 400, and I'll just put in a big number here so it goes all the way to the end. Process. So you can see that goes all the way up to the end. All right, so really nice and easy. We'll do another one um, here. So in a, in a one. I'll pick this string here, and out of one, I'll pick my, uh, and I'll make this one yellow. I think I've got a yellow in there, and poly, and I'll just let it go to, for the full length that it can find it, and just hit process. So you can see it's created that yellow one there, and I'll not to leave out the other side of the road, I'll just make another one here, polys 2, and for my other side of the road. And I still put it onto this same model. So in here, I'm going to start with this string that runs down the centre. 
No, I'll zoom in so I can pick it properly. MCEO2, and if I pick this string over here as my outer, my curb lip. All right, and I'll clear out these changes and I'll just let it run all the way. Just so you can see what we've got happening here. Oop, get rid of the start change process. So that will run all the way through where, where it can find it. So in here there was a gap where this string disappeared. So I'll need to do another one from in here. So if I just copy this down, okay, and then my inner string will be now this string here. Okay, so I'll just go process and we might even just for, for the sake of it, we'll make it a different color. So I'll just go process. Okay, and I'll add another one here for where my bus bay is. So um, inner string, outer string, and I'll make this one grey, and I'll call it poly. So there we go. There's our pavement, the way we're going to change the different colours. All right, so now to uh, colour my tin, so I'll turn on my um, tin, so tin design, and once again we're going to go to tins, uh, colour, colour within polygon. Now this time, instead of individually picking them like I did in the last one, I'll use model of polygons, and I'll just make sure I call it the same name. Um, and use polygon color, and so I just hit color. So then that's now colored all of my tin uh, the same as those. So I can turn off my road polys now, and then I can run my option to create my pavements. So uh, user, beta, pavement, create report volumes. So I've already got my style set up, don't want to waste your time, so I'll just say in here, my one, and hit process. So 40, and if I turn them on, there's all of my, all of my design. So you can see the new tools that we've got here. Um, I didn't colour that one there. That's why we missed out on some pavement under here because I haven't got these are just green. And if I don't have green in there, you can see that it misses out. Um, if I have a look at some cross sections, so if I, um, that's the other good thing about uh, that other macro, is it actually creates filtered sections as well. So I think we've got one here called RSO2 filtered sections. So if you don't, if you're scared of having that, that many cross sections, you can just use these filtered ones here. And if I have a look, this is what it's produced. And if I try and find where the bus bay was, um, that was under here. So if I turn on um, add, and I'll try and find where that bus bay was, which is this one here. Cross section. So you can see here for my curb type, I can also do like my V drain curb as well. And for my under curb, I just put a zero offset so that it didn't go outside here and it used the, the volumes over there. Um, this is a barrier curb. So this one actually comes down 150 millimeters into the pavement and it's um, nice and easy to, to see what's happening there. So, um, and once again, you just tick on the volumes. I don't have a, a, a subgrade tin or a natural surface to show you that, but you get the general idea from the previous one. So that's, um, that's some great new options that, we're, that we hope that you look forward to using and it will hopefully make your life um, a lot easier to, to produce volumes in a, in a fast way. So if you have any questions, um, as Lisa said, um, you can 
hit the little box there and, and ask away. Thanks, Paul. Uh, we got we got a question through uh, from Joel in Queensland. How does the materials manager deal with uncurbed roads, um, like pavements, daylighting to cut fill batters with varying slopes? Yeah, that's a good question. At the moment, like I said, it is um, aimed at bulk earthworks. We have had the thought of doing some um, um, another option called batter, where you put in a fixed batter or something like that, um, and you can put layers under that. But at the moment, that's we're still under development with the with being able to do batters. Now, for the most part, um, if you want to do batters and really complicated pavements, I would use um, Peter Tayton's method with the MTF. Um, this is more aimed at your kind of simple, fast way of, of producing volume. So, um, yeah, we will look at that one in the future as well for the batters. Sure. Um, and Meredith has asked, how do you deal with bulk fill required over the specified depth to the subgrade level? Hmm, I'm not sure what that mean? So bulk, can you read that question again please? Sure. Uh, with how do you deal with bulk fill required over the specified depth to the subgrade level? I may have to ask you to email me an example of what you mean. I'm not too sure. The other thing I forgot to show you too, um, if I just tab back out into my other project, was the super tin that gets created. So um, don't know whether this answers Meredith's question, but this gets created, this tin design combined with material subgrade. So that's basically the name of the tin used here with the combined with material subgrade. This is hard coded, this name. So if I add that back on, so it gets create it creates a super tin um, to the underside of all of the pavements. Okay, so um, then any volumes that are calculated are to the underside of all of the pavements. So if you have further questions, Meredith, just um, uh, email us and then we, we can follow follow that up offline. Perfect. Okay, I think we'll, um, we'll leave it there and get back to other audience members by email. So the recording of this webinar will be available in coming days through our website and our YouTube channel. Our next two training webinars are Snippets on the 12th of April and Title Block Files and the Drawing Register on the 26th of April. So do keep an eye on our website for details of those as well as our upcoming industry solutions topics. We'll also continue to keep you posted through email and social media. If you need to contact us in the meantime, our details are on the screen now. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you everyone for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.